you feel it, his absence, you see it, the tabernacle door is open, and our Lord is not there. And by God, my brothers and sisters, it makes me want to preach a short homily just so he'll be here just that much sooner. <laughs> but you're not going to be that lucky. <laughs> no, we have to talk about the one we love so much. We have to speak about the one who gave his life for you and for me. And what does that call forth from us? Oh, please God. Oh, please God. The strong desire for you and me to give our lives for him. Not just a little bit. Not just on Sundays. Every day of your life. Every day of your life. You need to be pouring yourself out. The world, my brothers and sisters, is ugly, sad, cruel, and broken. And it's almost like you can't look away. They shove it in your face. What do we stare at on our televisions and in our papers and our magazines and on our phones? The ugliness and brokenness of a fallen world. suffering war and famine and pestilence, and oh, please, God, don't let me think of death. It clings to you, hangs on you, like dirt on feet. You walk through a world, this suffering and shallow, and it clings to you. And the Christian, the Christian is called to wash it off, to set themselves apart. But not an isolation from it and say, I am too holy, do not touch me. No. Christians become like Jesus Christ. And when they touch a broken world with love, it begins to heal. It begins to become clean. Oh, how Jesus Christ loved to reach out to those so much in need. So much in need, he surrounded himself with 12 losers. These are not good people. Matthew's a tax collector. If patriotism is a virtue, he's got the vice in spades. I work for my oppressors. I collect from my brothers and sisters. I take more than I need. The fishermen, that was dirty work. Sometimes I think nobody understands death until they see fish rotting on docks. When times are hard, you have to make a living. Why do you think Peter throws himself down in his very boat, his very livelihood? And in the midst of the wealth of the world that's in his nets and in his catch, he says, depart from me. <laughs> I love Peter. Depart from me. I am a sinful man. Do you think it's because he didn't know who he was or the bad things he was capable of? There, at least, I don't think he was pretending false modesty. 
speaking of dirty hands, say nothing of Simon Zealot. The scriptures don't say anything on him. But with a last name like Zealot, he was something akin to a terrorist. Terrorists aren't known for fair fights or taking prisoners. Broken men. Men who understand the world, who understand what death looks like, who understand how to anesthetize themselves and pretend that they aren't dirty. Jesus Christ reaches out, he says, you, and you, and you. You come with me. You draw close to me. I'm not afraid of you. And if you're with me, you shouldn't be afraid of anything. You come with me. And for three years, this rustic rabbi of the hinterlands teaches the broken. And he does more than teach them. He changes them. Why is this night different from all the others? Because the Jews, the chosen people of God, whom he carries like children, are enslaved in Egypt, the land of sin, a broken world. It's in their faces all the time clanks and clatters on their hands and on their ankles like chains. And on this night, God spoke to his prophet and said, this is what you are going to do. You are going to take blood of an unblemished land, slaughter it, Make sure you have enough to feed everyone. And then you are to smear it on the doorposts and on the lintel. The sign of three in the shape of a T. Father, Son, and Spirit blessed. And I will come and I will correct the world in my justice, that which has been gained unlawfully shall be taken from them. The first fruits, the firstborn, I scatter the enemy, I place Pharaoh in sorrow. But my chosen ones I mark off with red liquid poured out, I claim thee, I separate thee. And from you will come Messiah. From you will come the rescue and the liberation of the broken world. Set apart but not walled off, they walk out of Egypt free. And it's Pharaoh's armies that tremble, oh, but for a day. If only they had been able to keep their holy fear, they could have kept their lives. Eighteen hundred years later, the Messiah foretold sits at the remembrance feast with his 12 broken men and he changes them. How easy it is to fall into sin even when you are so close to divinity. Oh, Catholics know this the best, my brothers and sisters, and that's why the devil always tries to treat us the worst. And in Luke's Gospel, we read that a fight broke out among them about who was greatest, who was closest to divinity. 
They are at table, and they have yet to wash their feet. Why not? Perhaps no one had been willing to wash the others, and Jesus Christ watches this argument. He knows what this night is. Do you think Judas silently took some secret, giddy, shallow pleasure in watching his brothers rip each other down in the presence of the Savior of mankind, as he thought to himself, this is no Savior. And Jesus Christ, the God-man, looks around. And I imagine, without a word, stood up and just started divesting himself. A shocking event. And the broken boys looked at their rabbi. And he went and got a water basin. And I imagine John stood up to try and take it from him. He showed him away. Sit down. And he took his feet and put them over the bowl. These men are nothing without Jesus Christ. He is the source, in a manner of speaking, of their pride. Truly, they are the source of their own pride. But being around him, they say, ah, we are separate. Ah, the world has no hold over me, and all they are thinking of is exactly what the devil wants them focused on, themselves. You can be in the same room as the Eucharist and be very far from him, my brothers and sisters. If your heart be not present with him. And he puts the feet over the bowl and he pours out water over his own priests, imperfect, broken men. And it shocks them awake. What's he doing? This is the work of slaves. We are not slaves. Hush, hush, hush. And there's Peter. Depart from me, I am a sinful man. You think those words came back to him? As he sat in his chair and fumed, as his master took his feet and made his point as he put them over the base. And he says, don't, please don't. This is embarrassing. I know I'm lower than you. It's not the best apology in the world. And Jesus says, shut up, brother. I'm going to wash your feet because you need me to wash your feet because on your own, you can't do it. And he says, well, then my hand's in my head as well, please. That's a better apology. And Jesus Christ looks at his priests, and he gives him another theology lesson. And he says, he who has already bathed has no need to have his head and his hands washed again. He just needs his feet washed. Not all of you are clean, though. How hideous mortal sin that separates you from the love of God. There's separation. Do you not see reconciliation in the bathing of the feet, of the washing away of the dirt and the grime off of their souls? Do you not hear the lesson of baptism being taught? I've already claimed you if I have washed your head and your hands. But if you fall back into it, come back to the confessional. The lesson he gives his disciples. He puts his clothes back on. He sits down. He looks at them, and they look at him. Do you realize what I have done for you? 
You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and the teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, as I have done for you, you should also do. The lesson of the priesthood, my brothers and sisters, is as the good Lord God has been merciful to me, as he has pulled me out of the scum of the earth, and set me apart. He didn't do it so I couldn't reach you. He didn't do it so we wouldn't understand you. He did it so that you might know him better and that he might be able to reach out to you through us. That is the purpose of the priesthood. He takes broken instruments and he says, watch this. And mercy flows out into a broken world and starts to wash it clean. And he takes bread and he takes wine and he says, this is me. This isn't a symbol of me. He says, this is me. He says to the priest, let me use your hands. Did you see what I just did? You guys do that. And just as I gave to you, you give to them. Make sure there is enough for everyone. Because it's me, and there will be enough. How could there not be? He even makes Judas a priest. The first really wicked priest didn't happen ten years after the church was founded. It happened that night. Why does he allow it? Because somehow in that mystery there is hope. that Judas, the liar, the sinner, the one who hides himself, if he but knew the gift he had been given, he might turn back. That's how generous our Lord is. He washes his betrayer's feet. He lets him make a bad confession. Because maybe you'll make another one and it'll be a good one finally. The mercy of a God man who knows he has to be opened up and poured out. He is the Lamb. He is the blood that marks us in the sign of the cross. Two thousand years. There has been enough to go around. Christianity has been the water to wash the world. It has been the blood to sanctify it. It has changed it beyond recognition of the ancients. It has put fear in the heart of that ancient serpent who knows his time is short. And so you gather on that night of remembrance, of representation. And I tell you of the desperation for the fight of souls, my brothers and sisters, yours and mine. It is chaotic, it is energy, it is salvation. The bells ring, the Gloria is sung. And in the old rite, peace is missing from the celebration of the Eucharist. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, is said in the old rite, not grant us peace. Do you think I came to bring peace or a sword? He who has his cloak should sell it and buy a sword. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, that line is again deleted from the old rite of the Mass. Why? Because this is the war. This is the night of victory. And you eat the meal ready to flee and fight. Passed on by him to you. Second reading. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, one thing passed to another, passed to another, passed to another, took bread and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often, and of course, in the same way, taking the cup, this is the covenant in my blood. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. What do we wait for? For paradise in a broken world? or for a new heavens and a new earth that is promised to us. Wash the world off, but then wash the world clean, brothers and sisters. We are your priests. We are desperate for you. We are desperate for you. I've seen the hands of the Master at work, and I donated mine. And Father Terry donated his, and Father Luke donated his. And look at where it's brought us, all together, right here with you, around the table of sacrifice. Ecstasy and terror. Power, privilege, all in service. You wash the world off, and then you seek to help the world know Jesus Christ so it might be washed clean. He loves us. He looks at you, and he looks at me as he hangs and dies upon a tree. And with every drop of blood, with every labored breath, it's I love you. And those drops of blood land inside a chalice 2,000 years later and are present in the flesh under the veil of bread. Twelve broken men, one turned traitor, eleven remain, and then they make a new one. And then those two, those twelve Men, blessed by the grace of God, go out into the broken world and they start to wash it clean. There is no more exciting job than to be a priest of Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters. And I used to jump out of airplanes. But live your vocations. Your vocation is holiness. Embrace it. You will look like him. And he suffers. He is betrayed. He is disfigured. He dies. He rises. All in glory. And you are his body. And his blood runs through your veins. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do.
He comes for each one of us. Fall in love. God bless you this evening.